All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Wilson Zare, who is in Eastern Oregon. How are you doing, Wilson? Great. How about yourself, John? Fantastic. And Wilson has over 20 years experience in high tech and telecom, over a decade working with internet related SaaS products and services. Uh, over the course of his career, Wilson's created numerous new products, brands, and successfully brought them to market. He's a serial entrepreneur who has been part of, started, or advised more than a dozen technology startups. He's also the co-founder and CEO of Zermail, Sendex, and Eastern Oregon Ventures. And what we're going to talk today is more about the, the Zare, Zermail, if that's the correct pronunciation, is it? Yes, that works. Excellent. <laughs> Zermail with a Z on the front. Yeah, yeah, Zare Mail. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is uh, direct market, uh, direct mail marketing. And so, tell me this, um, Wilson. A lot of a lot of the conventional. Tell me, let's talk, start with the conventional wisdom. A lot of, among a lot of people is that uh, direct mail is a thing of the past, right? And uh, it it isn't effective anymore. But um, you would have a different point of view. And in fact, uh, when I was reading, when I was looking over Zare Mail, I was saying that you say that the the effectiveness is even greater than the 1980s. Yeah, no. Um, direct mail is just like, you know, it's like any other tool. It's got um, places where it works very well and places where it works not as well. And so it becomes part of our whole um, portfolio of tools that we can use for marketing. Um, but it does some, some things that are very unique that other mediums um, struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, you know, if it, every house that the U.S. Postal Service touches every household in a business in America six days a week, mm -hmm. um, and it's proactive, right? So that, you know, if I send somebody a piece of mail, it comes and finds them. I don't have to wait for them to log in or for them to do a query or them to come and find it. I could reach out and grab them now. Um, in addition to that, the demographics are very well developed, right? If I want to try and reach Jewish dentists in New Jersey that have purchased a car in the last six months, I can find that list. I don't know how I would do that in email or, you know, search engine. Right. Um, you know, there's no, I, I'm not worried about spam filters. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about my message not getting there. And I also know that the direct mail is built into the American psyche. You know, people are, I mean, try to do some cold calling these days. I mean, <laughs> just not a very pleasant job. No, no, for sure. For sure. Um, um, there's a couple of things. I think, uh, does direct mail, how has, how has the change in work habits impacted direct mail? Because now with people not always being, a lot of people not being in offices at all and not being in the offices, how... If you're doing it, if you're doing B2B, how, how difficult is it to reach people if if they're not working in an office? But that's the only, you know, because typically you would have sent it to their office, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, if I'm, if I'm sending to consumers, then a direct, direct mail is, sure. you know, is, it works just perfectly. Uh, from a business standpoint, um, for folks that are out of the office, then we need a way to get the message to them. There are quite a few people that still have those administrative resources because, you know, additional mail is coming to their office. So they need to have a way of getting that that message to their individual, you know, home office environment. Um, it's, I mean, it can be a little more challenging sometimes, honestly, but it, but. We haven't seen it be a huge issue. I mean, it seems like people are set up to receive mail, receive mail. Right. Um, but direct mail in this perspective. So th let me back up for that and say yeah. that when I'm when I'm doing marketing with direct mail, a lot of times I'm trying to reach consumers. I'm doing I'm doing um, cash out refis or real estate. You know, just sold, just listed, or independent insurance agents or you know, hearing aid tests or things like that, where I need to reach a consumer that works just fine. Mm -hmm. Historically in B2B, I mean, uh, what we did is we would go out with a letter and then, you know, an introduction letter, and then we would make a phone call to follow up on our letter, just say, you know, just following up on our, on our, use that so that it becomes 
Um, it's not a cold call at that point. It becomes a warm call. And then we follow through, we follow this process. And it still works just fine just for doing that. We haven't really seen any fall off at all. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, um, what, what are some of the uh, ways that you've seen it really succeed? I mean, what are, what are some typically when you do an outreach to say, you know, any, pick any type of B2B company, what, what, what does a good outreach to them look like? That's a great question. I'm, I'm trying to think of um, recent examples of B2B. I mean, it, um, and I'm not really, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking more in this, you know, right now, to be honest with you, I'm thinking more about the election cycle. Right. We're spending more time um, pitching candidates and, and bond measures and things like that right now. Yeah. Um, and in that case, you know, it's really a portfolio approach. Um, right. So well, tell, me, tell me a little bit about how the process works with uh, Zermo, because I was thinking that um, one of the things that we've lost a little bit is that is that human touch, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's consumer, whether it's B2B, we've lost a little bit of that consumer, uh, that, that human or personal touch. And and for some reason, direct mail has a more personal feel to it than than any kind of electronic mail. I don't know. It's in our, maybe it'll change with the generations, but that's the way it is today. So um, I, I see that it could be very, very useful, as you just said. Therefore, it's introducing a nice personal touch. It may not be your initial outreach. It could be later on or whatever when you've confirmed. Mm -hmm. But how does your technology help? How would that help me with with that personal touch? Oh yeah, no, it it just makes it faster and easier. Um, and 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 you make a very good point. There's also something tactile about direct mm -hmm. mail, right? Which makes it somehow makes it more real for people when they receive it. But with this airmail system, basically, you uh, you know you're uploading list. You upload a document. You, you see a proof in real time. You like what you see. You push the button. You're in the mail tomorrow, the next day, at about half the cost. Um, so it's faster, easier. Each um, You'll get tracking information so you know when that's, you know, it's processed, printed, mailed, received. Um, we actually do production through a network of production partners. So we move the message as far as we can electronically before we turn it into paper, mm -hmm. which tends to um, increase delivery speed. It also gives us kind of unlimited capacity. Um, so we've, you know, we've just put engineering to work to make, uh, you know, an older tool faster, mm -hmm. easier. Um, and you know, and more reliable, honestly. And then that that uh, and the types of direct mail that that you can send through your system. What are the what are the formats? Oh, we, you know, we can send just about anything. But if if we're talking about what are the most common formats people use, usually it's postcards, mm -hmm. letters, self mailers, or um, snap packs. A snap pack is something that may not be familiar to. Yeah. Uh, to everyone, the snap pack is like when you get a, um, say, a message from your bank, and it's like a PIN number, or a rebate check, or something like that. They come in those little packages where you have to tear off the ends yeah. to open it. Yeah, the technical name for it in our industry is a pressure sealed mailer because mm -hmm. they, they make the templates in advance and they put these glue tabs down, and there's a special piece of equipment that presses it closed. But the you know the nickname is a snapback. Yeah, it's, it's much much uh, much friendlier name, much easier to remember. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the trick with this is that um, when I'm reaching out to somebody and I want to pick a format, then I ne I need to. There's a couple of questions I need to answer. One is of course cost. I mean, because unlike direct mail, I mean I have to pay for postage, so there's a mm -hmm. cost, and I, you know an ROI. I mean, it's one of the reasons why people still use direct mail is because it's always been ROI driven, you know. So um, <laughs> jobs that were profitable before are profitable now. If they're not profitable, people don't do them. Yeah. So, you know, direct mails really um, withstood the test of ta time on those grounds. But we have to ask ourselves, not, not only about cost, we have to ask ourselves about um, privacy as well. So the least expensive way to go from a direct mail standpoint is a postcard. And a postcard is is basically a little billboard in the mail. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get an immediate impression when you touch somebody. 
Um, if you've done a really good job and it's a great postcard, maybe it ends up on the fridge mm. and maybe you get a depression for the next six months. But, but it, at any rate, that's, that's what we get was we get, we have two sides to work with. Half of one side is more address information. So we need to make the, uh, the, the side with the image really work for us. Um, but because it's exposed to the world like that, we're limited in, uh, in what kinds of personal information we want to put in it. Sure. First, the amount of information, you know, should be fairly concise, but also we wouldn't want to expose just personal information like mortgage amounts or, mm -hmm. you know, a, a debt somebody owes or something like that to the entire world. On the other side, you know, we, we can do something like a, um, self mailer or even a letter in which case we have more space to work with. We've got, you know, um, I think one ounce is up to four sheets of paper and, and a number 10 envelope. So we've got a, plenty of space to work with and we could have confidential information because the only thing that, you know, the only person to see it, it will be the recipient. Mm -hmm. However, once you, once you start thinking about, um, a letter, then the trick be, um, becomes to get an open, right? Yeah. The letter arrives, so you got to get somebody to open it. You don't get the immediate impression like you do with a postcard. Um, and the snap pack really kind of fits really well in the middle there because mm -hmm. they're associated with rebates and pin numbers. You're almost always going to get an open with a snap pack. Yeah. Um, they have a little less space to play with, but I can still put more information in it and I can put personal information. In right. It. Right. And that's where you can put in your information. Like, you know, our record showed that your mortgage is X amount and you've got this percentage and I can do you a better deal, that kind of thing. Exactly. Well, when we talked about list availability before, I mean, if you're a bank or a credit union or a mortgage broker or something, you can actually buy credit score data too. Mm. So you can look at your, you know, for example, your underwriting criteria, Say, you know, in order to underwrite a loan, you're looking for somebody with a FICO of 640 or better, no bankruptcies last two years, no 30 day lates in the last 12 months, debt to income ratio of whatever that number needs to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can pull records that exactly match your underwriting criteria. And when you do that, then you know that everybody you touch, everybody who calls in from that campaign is a potential is somebody it's a deal that you could close based on your underwriting criteria and i have all that information i could put it in the letters because i have all that information i can also get somebody's current loan amount i'd say well if i'm going to finance it at 30 30 months here's the rate here's the apr here's what your new payments will look like and by the way we could have this done in 30 days mm -hmm. yeah it's, i mean so it's it's much more um as you said i mean it's much more personal and able to get that that more private information and personalized and like you said if you have your list well defined then they're almost pre they're pre-qualified basically and now you're waiting for you're waiting to actually just engage exactly when and we can try if you, we wanted to you try and do email marketing for that then we could try and find a list like that and we could try and append email addresses which is tricky because a lot of people have multiple email boxes and we don't want to send the wrong, you know, if we have personal information, we don't want to send it to the wrong email address. Yep. That would be bad. And then we have to battle with the spam filters. Um, which are getting tougher. Yeah. Well, it's something like 30% of even legitimate emails not delivered these days. Mm. Yeah. Because the spam filters have filter so much of it. And then people, you still have to get an open, you know, people, you know, if it's not the right subject line, mm -hmm. I mean, people aren't going to open it. So we, we just find that for that particular application, direct mail is the best tool. I mean, it doesn't, you, the only advantage to email is it's really cheap. So you can try and, you know, boil the ocean if you want. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, be more, uh, oh, sorry, but, go ahead. You know, I was going to say, but uh, direct mail is is historically pretty cheap as well, right? I mean, co co very cost effective. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's. Um, I mean, the, the, the Postal Service has, um, has been raising rates recently, the last couple of years, maybe a little more aggressively, but it's mm -hmm. still the lowest, you know, rates in the United States are still some of the lowest in the world. And... Um, and you're still talking about first class mail is i think it just went up to 71 cents or something mm -hmm. it's, it's just not 
especially if you're pre-qualified, right? If you've, if you're pulling a list of people that are pre-qualified for your offer, um, no, yeah, it's very effective. Mm -hmm. And what are some, uh, what are some creative things you've seen customers do? Oh, I mean, over the years, I've, um, I've seen people try lots of things. I think I, I, I did one, actually a B2B program one time where we were, um, we were going out to um, users of workstations made by a digital equipment corporation, DEC. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they had to, and we targeted people with black and white workstations. Right. And what we did was was um, try and upsell them into a color workstation. And the conventional wisdom was engineers don't care. You know, they're just doing this CAD stuff. They'll work on anything. And we sent that out with a poster, with an offer for a poster for people who wanted to respond. And um, we got response rates upward of 30%. Wow. It turns out that every engineer wants a color monitor. <laughs> it's completely a wrong assumption. There you go. There's conventional wisdom again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was says that one was very lucrative for um, actually we were doing that work, work with Sun Microsystems. Oh, um, right, yeah. And that worked out really well for them. Um, we we do have other um, we do see people try other things. I've I've had people um, do cash, put money in them, and in, in fact, um, <laughs> this is a funny story. They, if you want to get dollar bills and you want to get really crisp ones, you know that um, that are going to work yeah. well in the mail. There's something called Christmas money, and it turns out that the banks used to get stacks of this Christmas money right around Christmas. That's crisp new bills because some employers like to give it away to employees mm -hmm. for the holidays. Yeah. So if you can get this Christmas money, it works great for direct mail. And it's, you know, it's only a buck. And you say, what difference would that make? But when somehow when people pull out this crisp dollar bill, it really gets their attention. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I had, it's funny you mentioned that though, because I did have a. I worked one place many, many years ago, and the CEO liked to do that at Christmas. He liked to go around and give everybody a hundred dollars or something, like in cash. Like I think it was about 70, 80, or maybe more people in the organization, uh -huh. which was all nice and good, and it was it was cool to get it. Now the thing is, it had to then go on to your pay. <laughs> it had to go on to your pay and be deducted and taxed later. So it was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of nice to get $100 in cash, but it wasn't really $100. <laughs> yeah, no, that kind of takes some of the luster out of it. I mean, I, mean, uh, yeah. I used to work at a place where every year the, uh, the owner would give everybody a, a Christmas ham, like a, yeah. like a piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> And it sounds a little funky these days, but it was great. I mean, we appreciate it. My family appreciated it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you, if, if somebody was considering uh, direct mail right now, what would, what would your advice be? Oh, with, you know, with direct mail, I mean, I think more generally in terms of marketing and the marketing mm -hmm. mix, you know, being able to figure out what it is we're offering and, and aligning it with the target audience, looking at the value proposition, and then really, you know, finding a price point that makes sense so that we can capture the value. And then distribution channel, you know, uh, how do we how do we sell the thing? Mm -hmm. um, and then the final piece, promotion, is which is what we're talking about. Advertising is promotion, and it's the final piece of the marketing mix because the role of advertising is to build awareness and create activity in the channel. So that, I mean, it really depends on wh what we're selling and how we're trying to sell it to people. Um, for me, if I'm thinking about doing direct mail, that, you know, when we, if, we, if we've gone through that process and we're at the point where we're deciding on promotion and we're talking about direct response, and by the way, direct response is a big category, right? It could be television or radio or mail sure. or all these have direct response. There's that the idea of this concept between or distinction between direct response or brand advertising, right? So Nike, when they say just do it, there's no place to respond anywhere. I mean, that's brand, heavy brand. On the other side is, you know, we send people somebody a piece of mail and they say, dial this number now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Response. So if um 
I would say, and if we're looking at direct response, the rule of thumb is, you know, there's three primary criteria that drive responses. One is the audience. About 70% is making sure we have the right list. Like talking about those FICO scores mm -hmm. before. Um, another 20% is the, is the offer. You know, how, if I can put a, a compelling offer in front of the right th person, good things happen. And we, we know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever's left is creative, you know, so, you know, colors, pictures. And, and that creative can, can play a bigger role with something like postcards when we want to get that immediate pop, yep. you know, that billboard in the mail. But really, I mean, it's, it's making sure that we're talking to the right person and we've got an offer that they can't refuse. And if we can do that, we're going to have good results. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, thanks very much, Wilson. We're bumping up against the end here. All of Wilson's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. What was this, John? Sorry. I said, if you want to tell people a little more about what you do. Oh, yeah. No, so Zare Mail is the, um, we're the fastest, easiest way to send send mail. We actually do have this, the tool I described earlier for doing direct mail, upload a piece, upload a um, list, see a preview, push a button and go out. We have a brand new product, a desktop application called Speedy that allow you to send even one letter. So you just take your document, drop it on Speedy and say, do, do you want to upload this or send it? You say, send it and we'll put it in the mail for you. We'll grab an address and put it in a, uh, in the mail. So if you've ever looked around for a postage stamp or an envelope or a label and 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 had to mess with all of that, those days are over. Just download Speedy, www.zeremail.com slash Speedy. Download Speedy and you'll never have to look for a stamp again. That's fantastic. Uh, listen, thanks again, Wilson. Thank you for watching and listening. And I go uh, encourage you to go check out, check out Zeremail and Speedy. Uh, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.